I, I hate to disappoint you, but we, we were not at all thinking about anniversaries or um, milestones when we started this album. We, we, we really did the 20th anniversary celebration um, on the, the 2005 tour, which was the 20th anniversary of the band. So I feel like we kind of have done the 20th anniversary celebration, and we did um, uh, the 15th anniversary of One Dream and Day Unite back in 2004. We played the entire album in its entirety. So I feel like we've kind of done the milestones and the celebrations. When we went into the studio to make this record, it was just the next record, you know? Um, the 10th album to us is just as important as the fourth was, and just as important as the 17th will be. You know, they're all equally important for us. Honestly, no. I, I hate to disappoint, but it was just the next record for us. Well, b before we had this album, I, I did have a, a thought in the back of my mind that it would be cool to do an album filled with epics. And every Dream Theater album has had one or two epics. You know, if you look at the catalog, there's always like a Learning to Live or Change of Seasons or Octavarium, uh, In the Name of God, In the Presence of Enemies. Every album has had a song like that. And in the back of my mind, before we started this album, I thought it could be really cool to have an album filled with those type of epics. So we ended up writing these four big ones, uh, all of which are over the 12 minute mark. And uh, it felt very satisfying. I think we definitely achieved that, uh, that kind of goal that I had, at least in the back of my mind, of, of an album of epics. But we did inevitably want to have some balance and uh, ended up writing two shorter songs as well. So it's almost like we wrote four songs for the fans and for ourselves, and then two songs you know, for radio and for, for the label, you know, something that's a little easier to swallow. So I think it's a, it's a good balance. Well, the writing of this music is the same as it's ever been. I mean, we've done five out of the last six albums in the studio, recorded and written simultaneously. But that being said, the writing process itself is no different than it's been since day one. You know, even since the very, very early days, it starts with the instrumentalist just jamming, and that's how the ideas come out. And then once we have a, you know, a, a list of ideas and riffs and progressions, then we start to arrange them and develop them and embellish them, you know, together. And it's a big collaborative process. That's that's the way it's always been. You know, it's not like since we started writing in the studio, it's changed. The process of the, the writing has always been this way. It's the recording process that's different now. You know, now we'll immediately record them as opposed to in the old days where we would write them and then put them on the shelf for six months and then have to like go back and relearn them like, like playing a cover song. So that's the only difference, you know. And now we just get to record them immediately while they're fresh and, you know, while we're focused on, on them. Like I said earlier, um, Every album is important to us. Um, we've never made a record on, on autopilot or uh, you know cruise control. You know, every time we go into the studio, we're as hungry and passionate as as ever. Um, so making this record, we, we poured our heart and souls into it. We wanted to make every song as good as they could be. Uh, you know, we want to have that dream theater sound and style. We want to be progressive and heavy. Uh, melodic, but at the same time, we want to continue to grow and develop. You know, we don't want to sound like the same as we did in 1992. You know, we want to have that same foundation, but where we go every time, we want to be able to change and roll with the times and the sounds that are, you know, contemporary. So this was like any other album, you know, it was important and we were very proud of it. It's not at all a concept album. I mean, these are six individual songs with individual identities. Um, you know, The Shattered Fortress is kind of an, an exception because that's part of um, a, a series of songs that existed from previous albums. But other than that, each one of these songs were fresh and, and written with a clean slate. No concept involved. Um, but once we started writing, um, once me and John started getting the lyrics together, we started to see a common thread in what we were writing about, which were these dark, heavy situations, you know, dealing with death and, and uh, recovery from addiction and, you know, near fatal accidents and all these kind of negative, dark situations. And, and that's, that's kind of where I thought of the album title, uh, you know, because there's an expression, every cloud has a silver lining, meaning any bad situation you're in, you know, something positive can come out of it. And, and the lyrics that John and I were writing kind of had that common thread. These were dark subjects, but in each case they were kind of 
optimistic and hopeful. And then musically as well, I thought the title totally summed up Dream Theater's music. You know, the Black Clouds is the heavy, dark metal side of the band, and the Silver Linings are the progressive, melodic, you know, dynamic side of the band. So I thought it was a, a perfect title to sum up the music and the lyrics. What's up to all of our great, great Japanese fans? It's Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater here, and uh, we miss you guys, and hopefully we'll be seeing you real soon. Hopefully you enjoy the new album, and uh, we'll be on the road supporting it, and hopefully we'll be in Japan sometime in the near future. We look forward to seeing you again.